You see, most of us in this room have tried to fill that, how did he describe it, that big black hole, that emptiness, one way or another. Started out this message by saying this is not about them, it's, it's about us. Because many of us have, have tried to fill that void in a lot of different ways. I, I love this verse, Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. It says this, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. How many of you know that Jesus said in the, in the festival, He said, anyone who thirsts, come to Me. He lifted up His voice. Sounds like Jesus here. And Isaiah went on to say, And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine, wine and milk. Come without money and without cost. Obviously, the prophet's looking forward to the gospel of Jesus Christ that's been freely given. Aren't you glad that God has given the gospel? You say, well, what's been given? I'll tell you what's been given. Love, forgiveness, healing, wholeness, joy, peace, happiness, contentment. All of that is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the good news is this, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Come on. It's the price is already paid. And so the prophet Isaiah and Jesus Christ say come and drink you don't need money everything that you needed is provided in the person of Jesus but what's interesting is the prophet goes on the next verse and he says this why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy and how many of you know he's not talking about bread there right some spend, and, and Nick obviously was, you know, spending everything he had, you know, trying to fill that big dark hole, that big black hole in, in, in his soul. But at the end of the day, it didn't satisfy. And others say, well, you know, if I can just get that new car or go on that big vacation or, or, or get a better job or, or find a perfect maid or, or get completely in shape or, 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 you know, it could be a million different ways that we try to fill that hole. But in the end of the day we aren't satisfied because let me tell you the only thing that can fill the void inside of humanity is the person of Jesus Christ that's it amen that's it I, I, you say pastor you know you sure are shallow minded you don't have a very broad view of life I've got a very broad view of life come on because I know the end from the beginning come on I believe that that, that the only thing that can make a difference people's lives is Jesus Christ and walking with him knowing with him he's the best way to live come on he's the only way to live come on and that's why the prophet went on to say he said listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance incline your ear and come to me and then he says this in verse 3 he says listen that you may live Oh, while choosing sin is choosing death, choosing Jesus is choosing life. Come on. And so what, are, what we need to do as a church, we need to always point people to Jesus. Amen? We don't need to point out their sin. We need to point them to Jesus. And then number three, the last perspective is this. Perspective number three. The church must be like a welcoming hospital for the broken. This is not a museum, for, a museum for the saints of God, okay? This ought to be a place where it's like a hospital for the broken. Many years ago while I was just in Bible college, I, I, I heard a little saying. I, I don't know who, I think Leonard Ravenhill said it in one of his writings, but he was quoting somebody else, but it goes like this. Some want to live in the sound of chapel bells, but I want to run a mission next door to the gates of hell. I wrote that in the fly leaf of my Bible. You say, Pastor, what's your heart? I'll tell you what my heart is. My heart's for the people of God. But let me tell you, there's a heart that's down on the inside of me that, 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 that aches sometimes for the broken. I don't know about you, but you ever just walk through the store and you look up and you see the families and you see the people and you wonder, what's, what is that person going through? What sorrows are they carrying? What, what, is it that they, what is it that they need? My heart aches for them. Like Jesus said, Jesus said these words, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And my words want to echo that. Just come to Jesus. Come to the Lord. Come to Him. If you're laboring, if you're in a heavy burden today, He'll give you the rest that you need. And I want to 
say to this congregation today that one of the most important ministries that we have at Fountain of Life I'm more convinced of its power today. I'm more convinced of its reality today than I ever have been as a ministry that meets on Friday nights. It's called Celebrate Recovery. I believe in that ministry. I believe in that ministry because of a man right here by the name of Richard. You know, we never have gotten you your one-year chip, man. This guy's been sober for over a year. Come on, can we give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise today? Let me tell you, I believe in Celebrate Recovery. And we have opportunity there. And I, you know, what's interesting about Celebrate Recovery is if you look at the long list of churches that have it in Houston, mostly it's always huge churches that have Celebrate Recovery. First Baptist, Second Baptist, you know, a lot of you know, Life Bridge Church, all different large churches. Let me tell you, we have a Celebrate Recovery, and I believe in it. And I'd like to see it grow more and more. How many of you are going to believe God with us? You're going to trust the Lord with us? Every time you put your tithe in the offering, every time you give, every time you pray, it's a, a powerful thing. And I'm just going to let you know that I'm searching for people who have a heart to help others. If this movie stirred you, if you're the kind of person that looked at that and said, man, I know that there are people in our world that are suffering. Listen, Celebrate Recovery needs you, my friend. We have opportunity if we had a ministry for people with children, you know, we have, there's a website, a Celebrate Recovery website, and a lot of our guests come from that. They look on there, and it tells, you know, what kind of ministries that there are in every church. And, you know, if you're looking for a Celebrate Recovery and there's no child care and you got child care, you need child care. How many of you know you're not going to be able to come? Come on, if there's no child care. But there's a program that's called, I don't can't remember what we call the, the name of it, but it goes right along with the Celebrate Recovery, uh, you know, docket. And it, and it just corresponds like this. Another one for youth called The Landing. And let me tell you something. If you say, well, are you casting vision today? Absolutely. I'm believing God today. I'm trusting God. We just got through singing. I believe that God can move a mountain. I believe He can do anything. Come on. I'm believing God that we're going to see people saved and set free and and delivered out of our Celebrate Recovery ministry. If you believe God, say give, give the Lord a big hand of praise because nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with Him. We need stability in that ministry. It's not the kind of thing you can come one week and be gone the next three. and then, No, no. We need those who will say, you know what, man, I'm going to give my life for this. Give my life and my heart for this. Well, I've written a few steps toward wholeness today. I want to read them to you today. We're going to end with this today, all right? Here's three of 12 steps. You may have heard them before. We admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors that our lives had become unmanageable. Step number two. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Step number three, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. In other words, we made a decision to give our lives to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, Celebrate Recovery is all about Jesus. Those are the first three of 12 different steps that help people along life's way. You know, let me just clear up one small thing. Celebrate recovery is not simply for people that are like Nick or alcoholics. No, no. It's for people with hurts, habits, hang-ups. If you've suffered a grief, if you're going through sickness, what, a lot of different things that Celebrate Recovery can help a person with. It's a group that's small Enough where people love each other and care about each other. They listen to you. They're there. It's support. It's love and it's care. How many of you are going to believe God with us today? Would you stand with us today? Thank you for just letting me preach. How many of you found this an interesting, interesting movie? Amen.